Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Luke chapter 6, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Luke chapter 6. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples broke off heads of grain, rubbed off the husks in their hands, and ate the grain. But some Pharisees said, Why are you breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus replied, Haven't you read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went to the house of God and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests can eat. He also gave some to his companions. And Jesus added, The Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched Jesus closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them one by one and then said to the man, Hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At this the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with him. One day soon after, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostle, apostles. Here are their names. Simon, who he named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Issachar, who later betrayed him. When they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him, and he healed everyone. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God bless, it, bless you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. God bless you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when, you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets this, that same way. What sorrow awaits you who are rich, for you have your, for you have your only happiness now. What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who cur curse you, pray for those who hurt you. If someone tr slaps you on, the, on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? 
Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Students are not greater than their teachers, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the flood waters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it was well built. But anyone who hears and does not obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the flood sweeps down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. Amen. So what did you think of Luke chapter 6? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Luke chapter 6 starts out with a discussion about the Sabbath. And again, this is something that I've spoken on with um, in Matthew and in Mark. Um, and I always leave it open for you to put what your feelings are on the Sabbath. Do you celebrate the Sabbath? And if you do, what does that mean to you? Because, you know, in the Old Testament, the meaning of the Sabbath was very strict. You know, you couldn't even lift anything with your right hand. You couldn't turn lights on. You couldn't cook. Um, you know, there was, you couldn't drive anywhere. There is a lot of, um, you know, very strict rules as regards to the Sabbath. Um, so I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. I know that the New Testament, you know, there's not a particular day for the Sabbath. You know, the Old Testament, it was Saturday. Um, you know, now it's more open to interpretation. Um, and I like just the fact that Jesus freed us from the burden of being restricted by a day to celebrate God. We can celebrate God and obtain that rest in any day because the world that we live in now, it's not always easy. Some people have to work um, seven days a week. And I know that there's a a thought process that says that we should rely on God to provide for us if we take that one day. And I definitely agree that we need a day of rest in our lives. We all do. We need a day of rest and to celebrate God. And that is why God instituted the Sabbath. It wasn't to burden us, but to free us. And I think that sometimes that gets lost with that obligation of feeling like it's an obligation to rest and to not do anything, um, you know, on one day a week so um, you know personally I go to church on Sundays um, and that's usually the day that I choose as my Sabbath but I know that other people do you know 
choose Saturday and they go to church on Saturday. So I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Um, I'm also not as strict as to say I won't lift anything with my right hand or I won't drive anywhere or I won't cook. Um, you know, that's not, you know, my idea of the Sabbath. And, you know, that's not what God has imparted on me not to say that that won't change over time as I grow in spiritual maturity that may change and I may decide that you know maybe I don't want to even turn on a light you know on the Sabbath anymore um, so you know that's just something that we all need to have a conversation with God about to decide what is best for us and, and in our in our lifestyle what God thinks that we personally need in order to um, you know grow spiritually and to you know honor him in the best way um, but Jesus was trying to point out that they were focusing too much on the rules of the Sabbath and not on the purpose of the Sabbath which I think that a lot of people do in life in general we follow rules you know blindly without really understanding what the purpose is and making sure that we're serving the purpose of the rule and I think that's the most important thing when it comes to the Sabbath like let's just make sure that we are serving the purpose of the Sabbath and not just saying okay I'm not going to turn on a light I'm just going to sit here in the dark not touch anything and this is my Sabbath are you really honoring God that way does that really honor God in your sight um, so I think that it's important that we just recognize what the purpose is and we're serving that purpose by for and in, in to honor God um, in that in that aspect so okay I'm gonna stop um, stop rambling I've also said in the past about this man, I love how he asked the man to hold out his hand so that he could heal him. And I've said this, you know, multiple times that we have to offer ourselves up to be healed. Um, you know, we have to tell God what we need from him. You know, we, he wants a relationship with us. He wants to communicate with us. Yes, God knows everything that ails us. He knows our every thought, but he wants us to rely on him. He wants us to ask him for help. And sometimes he can't intercede if we don't ask for him to, you know, that's where the whole free will part comes in. So it's important that we are constantly, and that's part of praying ceaselessly. We're constantly offering ourselves up to God to be healed. So if you're, you know, thinking negatively, offer that thought up to God to be healed. If you're in pain, offer that pain up to God say God I know that you did not um, create me to live a life filled with pain I'm offering this pain up to you to heal you know here heal me of this show me what I need to do to be healed of this reveal the truth of this situation to me you know we have to talk to God have that conversation with him and offer ourselves up to be healed um, so the next section is where he chooses his 12 disciples and um, he called together all the disciples and chose them by name and there's the list of them. The next section um, and you know one thing I want to point out just in this section is he said um, he went up to the mountain to pray and he prayed to God all night um, before he chose these people and I think that we need to do the same thing as we choose people in our lives as far as our friends go or you know the people that we associate with um, the activities that we you know th that we um, participate in we need to make sure that we are praying on those things and talking to God about those things you know I always say that I pray almost every day or I talk to God almost every day about this channel if this is something that he wants me to continue doing and um, I think that it's important that we do that with the people in our lives as well so you know spend time praying to God and saying you know God are these the friends that you want me to have are these the people that you want me to have in my life you know is this the activity that you want me to be a part of maybe you're on a sports team or you're considering joining a um, group in church or a small group at your church or maybe you're considering serving at your church are you spending time you know really praying to God and asking him to lead you in those decisions of the people that you should be spending your time with and the things that you should be doing with your time. Um, so it's just something that I think that if Jesus had to pray all night to decide who his apostles are going to be, we need to do the same thing if we're going to decide who's going to be in our inner circle and who we're going to devote our time to. Um, so the next section talks about the crowds following Jesus. Um, you know, they came to hear him, but they also came to be healed of their diseases. And it says those troubled by evil spirits were healed. So just spending time with God 
anything that's troubling you will be healed in time you know give it some time and watch God work watch his healing power you know just spending time in his word following his commands is healing you know spending time with Jesus is healing um, it says everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him and he healed everyone so you know spend time get in touch with Jesus so that you can be healed so you can um, enjoy some of that healing power that God has um, so then, um, the next section is the bestitudes and I just put amen. I think it's, um, such a blessing. It says, what blessings await you people when people hate you, exclude you and mock you and curse you. Um, and I, I underline this because dealing with bullies, it's something that I always have to remember and remind myself that the blessings await me when people are hating on me or, you know, being evil to me or bullying me. I just remind myself of the blessings to come and the fact that eventually God is going to choose who his children really are. And, and on that day, I'm praying that he chooses me as his child and and I'm doing everything that I can to please him and to be in his family because um, blessed are those who are poor. The kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those who are hungry now for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now for in due time you will laugh. So just remember if you're crying right now, if you're hungry right now, if you're poor in spirit or financially, just know that your time is coming, that the kingdom of God is yours you know, just endure and keep the faith and know that God loves you and he is preparing the way for you. He's preparing a table for you. And then I like where it says sorrow is foretold. So just remembering in your mind sight that those people who are laughing at you now for laughter will turn to mourning and sorrow. Just know that they're the people who are mocking you and, and laughing at you and, you know, tormenting you, that they're going to be sorrow. The only thing that awaits them is sorrow. Um, so it, there's no better time than if you're one of those people, there's no better time than now to then to turn from your wicked ways. Um, and, you know, I wrote the next section is love for your enemies. And I wrote up to the side, God, soften my heart and stretch it so that I may love my enemies the way you love me. And it's a constant struggle and a battle for me to love those who are mean to me and to torment me in the moment. It's always easy, you know, once I've come down from that situation to, you know, forgive them and, you know, let it go. But in that moment, I want to get better at um, not being undisturbed, being unbothered, being, you know, maybe swaying a little bit, but never snapping. I don't want to be affected by the people who are hurting me. I want to show them that God's love, regardless of the way that they're treating me in that moment. And, you know, that's something that I'm constantly praying on. And I definitely see God working his magic in me. You know, when you've been through a lot, you know, it's easy to be bitter. You know, I think about Naomi and just being bitter. And sometimes I feel bitter to the world for some of the things that I've been through. And, you know, I'm just praying on God to soften my heart and remove the, that bitterness from me so that I can love people the way that he, he loves me um, in the moment when I'm feeling, you know, that way before I've had time to, you know, calm down and really just, you know, pray and release those things to God. But in those moments, you know, that's another thing, just offering yourself up to be healed. So in that moment when I'm being bullied and tormented, and as soon as I realize that I'm having a negative thought about that person, or, you know, I'm feeling, you know, angry or hurt, I offer that up to God. And I say, God, you don't want me to feel angry or hurt in this situation. So I'm giving these thoughts to you. I'm God, I really don't like this person right now. So I'm giving that to you because I know you want me to love them. Um, so we just need to offer those things up to God and trust in him to heal those things from us and to carry that burden so that we don't have to. I don't want to carry the burden of being negative or being mean or cynical or skeptical of everyone. I don't want to look at everyone with a side eye. Um, you know, I want to see everyone the way God sees them. So, you know, I have to offer those things up to God daily. And same with judging others. The next section is do not judge others. Um, I don't want to be judged. And so it's 
you know, I have to remind myself constantly, don't judge others. You know, when I'm looking at people, I don't want when I'm out people to be looking at my outfit, talking about my outfit. So I don't want to look at other people's outfits and talk about their outfits. And that's just real surface level. You know, it gets a lot deeper. It gets to down to people's actions, the things people say, the way people treat other people. You know, I don't want to, um, you know, judge them. I want to have that same attitude that Jesus had on the cross where he said, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do you know I just want to look to people and and they know not what they do you know and just keep it moving I don't want to have to judge anyone because I don't want to be judged and it says um and then it talks also about you know forgiving others and it, and it talks about giving it says give and you will receive um you know I love this 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 thing this um this verse where it says the gift will return to you in full pressed down shaken together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap the amount you give will determine the amount you get back so it's just another reminder to give of ourselves to give of our money to give of our time to give of our heart um you know just make sure you're giving um a lot of people when they hear giving they think it's only just money but it's not sometimes it's in spirit sometimes it's in love sometimes it's in prayer sometimes it's in time you know just make sure you're giving of yourself and you're not being selfish and holding everything back um and then the next section is talking about the tree and its fruit and um you know i a tree is identified by its fruit so again just being able to look to other people and you know determine you know who they are or you know whether they're good or evil based on the fruit you know it's not just to say well they go to church or they don't because you can't just judge somebody because you know their social media bio says christian girl or christian guy you know you can't just judge people by titles you know you really have to judge them by the things that they do and how they act and the things that they say and it says that um, a good person produces good things from a treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from a treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. So really start listening to the way people talk and the things that they say, um, how they act. You know, I didn't realize sometimes how like vulgar I sounded and some of the things that I used to talk about, how idle and insignificant they were. They didn't produce any fruit. They were only they were only thoughts, um, you know, words of destruction you know tearing people or things down complaining um gossiping you know those types of things that were just um i felt like you know that was normal that's what i was supposed to be talking about that's what everyone talks about right but we're set apart so we're not supposed to do what other people do so we have to really just grow in our spiritual maturity to where we're not gossiping as much we're not talking about other people negatively you know the really the things that we're saying are you know pleasing to god's ears so really just be mindful of that you know ask yourself like it you know, and the things that you're talking about, is this pleasing to God, what I'm talking about? Um, you know, or is it, or is he cringing when he's hearing this conversation? <laughs> um, so the next section is building on a solid foundation. And, and I wrote off to the side, um, only call on God if you're willing to do what he says. And um, it says, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? So it's important that, you know, when we ask God for something, we listen to his direction because I didn't always used to do that. Sometimes the things that God tells us to do aren't always easy, but the results are always great. So we just have to make sure that we are listening to the things that God says and make sure we're starting here. You know, it's easy to ask him for a bunch of other things, but if you're not doing what it says here, then um, what reason does he have to, you know, um, you know answer some of your other prayers you know so we just need to make sure that we're following God's instructions first and foremost you know start here and then start asking him for the other things <laughs> um, but it's important it says um, to build your foundation you know the foundation of your faith should be fear in God and we should definitely this is our foundation you know spend time in your word you're watching this channel that's a great thing it's a great place to start you know make sure you're spending time in his word and obeying his commands you know you want to build our foundation on solid rock 
so they're we're not we're undisturbed so we're not swept away by you know anything that comes by to knock us down because the enemy will try so we definitely need to keep our foundation strong and keep you know um taking care of it you know you can't just read the bible once and then that's it we need to be reading every day um maybe multiple times during the day maybe in the morning and at night maybe sometimes at lunch you know whatever you need to do listening to praise music throughout the day you know it's definitely something that you need to constantly Constantly maintain you know you need to take care of it like you would your house you know you wouldn't just let your house deteriorate we need to take care of it daily so that is my interpretation of Mark, of Luke chapter 6 I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it leave it in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed stay in God's presence and have a great rest of your day I love you